Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Kitten Pop. Thank you so much for joining me. For those of you who are coming back, thank you so much for coming. For those of you who are new, this is Kitten Pop Creations and we like to do crafting and I show you guys tips and tricks and little things that I use. I am an Etsy shop owner. I own a shop called Kitten Pop Creations and I love, love, love making little things out of resins or wood or anything like that. So on this channel, we try to kind of focus on little things that you guys can do that are practical but are very entry level. There's nothing super intermediate on this or anything like that. So without further ado, let's get started. Today's um, tutorial is going to be how to make these really cute little shot glasses. They are novelty shot glasses. We're gonna, I'm going to show you how to do the different layers. I'm going to show you how to embellish them with any kind of little skulls or bones or anything like that. We've got everything we need, so let's get started. Okay guys, so you know the first thing that we want to do is we're going to be covering up our pretty little blouses, so we're going to be getting our apron. I'll be right back. Great, so now that we have our apron covering up our mess over here, I do want to be able to start with um, what we're going to need for this. Now I use a pour on resin. It's pretty cheap. You can get it at Michael's. You can also get it online. Everything I use here, I'm going to link down below so that you guys can try this out and do all the things that you want to do. Um, now, these are going to be for Halloween, of course, but you can make them for any occasion. They can be for Valentine's Day, um, a bridal shower, a bachelorette party, anything you guys can think of. Like I said, this is just kind of the basics on how to do layering. I thought the candy corn was such a cute idea. I've seen it a few times, so I wanted to use that. So we are going to use a one-to-one -one ratio mixture on this resin. In my previous tutorials, I have shown you how to mix that kind of stuff, so we're not going to go into how to mix resin today, but um, you can check out those tutorials. That way you can see how to mix resin if you don't know how, because I already have pre-mixed resin. So I got these little sprinkles. Now remember, resin coats candies. I've never tried chocolate, but anything that's candy coated is usually pretty good inside of resin and doesn't melt or anything like that. So that's always a good thing. I am also hashtag not sponsored by resin ink, but I love resin ink inks, especially these neons. These ones give out the best colors for anything like this that you want to really just pop. I have one layer, then the second layer, then the third layer, we're going to pull this out. That way we can um, take a look at what they look like when they come out of the mold, depending on what kind of mold you have. And then we're going to go ahead and glaze it and maybe even put a little emblem on it. Alrighty guys, so the first layer that I did, I actually used just a pinata white, but you can use any kind of white, an acrylic, anything. And I used my sprinkles at the bottom just to kind of give it that little candy touch. You know, Halloween's all about candy. So we got that. So what I'm going to do is mix the next layer with my resin. I'm gonna show you guys how well this stuff works when you mix it. Now, my cap is a little broke because I've been using it like crazy. You have to shake these. So you don't need a whole, whole lot, but you do need enough to make sure that it's nice and pigmented. I'm going to mix this up. See how it mixes nice? Now the good thing about the resin ink that we use is that unlike acrylic paint, it doesn't change the chemical composition of the resin, so it actually gives you a much more vibrant color without changing the formulation so that it doesn't um, keep it from curing the correct way because we don't want any of the chemical composition to change and then the curing effect doesn't work. Alrighty, see how fast? That was pretty easy. And we're just gonna slide this in here to make that second layer. Now, you have to make sure that your layer is dry before you put the next layer in because then it'll just mix into a big old mess. Unless of course you want some kind of marbled effect because that's real easy to do as well. You can even do that without doing it on purpose. So we're gonna go around the sides. See how bright that is? It's wonderful. I 
I try and scrape off as much as I can to make it nice and full. Great. So that's our second layer. We're going to set this one aside and let it cure. And then we are going to go ahead and make that third layer. Here's another cup of our resin. Now to make all these took up a whole set of my resin. So just to kind of give you an idea of how much you're going to be using, let's see, I have four of these here plus the three here, so that is how much this will make. Um, this retails for about $24.99, but at Michael's, you can always get that 40% off coupon. It's a big discount. It's worth the money. So let's do the yellow now. Remember that little candy corn coloring that we're going to be doing? I don't like the way that shakes. Very good. Oh, maybe one more. Just for good measure. And we're gonna mix this nice and easy. See how pretty that is? It doesn't take long to make it takes longer to mix the resin than it does to mix the color. I am getting thirsty. Go bills. So now we can go ahead and dip this. This will be our final layer, as you can see here. We're just going to pour it right on top. Now, like I said, remember that orange has got to be cured. Any colors underneath have got to be cured. Um, I've experimented a couple of times with an ombre look. Um, I'm, you really have to be very good at the um, timing to know when whatever resin you're using to know when it's in that kind of half cured, half not step. That way you can get that ombre effect where it will start to blur but doesn't marble, I guess you could say. I don't know if I'm using the right terminology. You know what I mean. All right, so that is good. We're gonna let this one cure. See how cute that is? Now on this one, I did wanna show you guys how we, um, how it looks when it first comes out of the mold. So let's get that. I'm just gonna peel away at these molds. Now this mold on Amazon comes in a set of four. That's how I made four at a time. But I like to cut them because it's so much easier to show you piece by piece and they're easier to deal with. When I'm breaking this mold, I don't have to worry about breaking another one. So what I'm gonna do is actually turn it inside out because of the way the mold is done like a cup. Twist it out, pops right out. There you go. See? All done. I'm just gonna put my mold back so it doesn't deform. And these molds are pretty strong. Goes right back into place. So now we have our beautiful little shot glass. Now, see how shiny it is on the bottom? The mold made it very matte finish. And I guess you could say like a flat, which is fine for some people. If some people like the flat matte look, then you're golden right out the gate. If not, I like to glaze them. So we're gonna go ahead and get some resin and we're gonna start glazing. Okay guys, so I have my resin ready. It's all ready for glazing my shot glass. Before I do that, I do wanna put a bit of an indention in my shot glass just to give me a little bit of room to put my skull, just like a little emblem. So we're gonna get our Dremel. Believe me, all this is gonna be linked down below in case you have any questions on what I'm using. Um, let's try. Anytime you use your Dremel, you should probably wear a mask. I just kind of blow it out of my face. I'm just used to it. They do the same thing at the nail shops, but do this in a well ventilated area, maybe outside, something like that. I really need to get you guys a tutorial on how to use your Dremel because it is a lifesaver when it comes to filing or indentions or anything like that. Good stuff, good stuff. So every time I'm going to glaze something, if you guys have watched my previous videos, you know that I love to use a brush to do the glazing, but first we're going to get our handy dandy E6000 glue. And we are going to glue with that little indention.
our lovely little emblem. See? So it's not going anywhere. E6000 glue is such good glue. I use it for most of my resin projects, any of my um, cell phone cases, if anything needs to be glued that's plastic, rubber to rubber, anything like that, this is the ticket. So, what I'm going to do first is the top. I'm going to glaze the top first. I'm not going to glaze the inside because nobody's really going to see it, so let's just do the top. A paintbrush really just makes it so much easier than having to try and use a popsicle stick or anything like that. I like it much better. Nice and shiny. Now for this part, it's going to get a bit more difficult to hold on to this and we're going to get a little bit sticky because your fingers are going to touch the resin. So I just stick my two fingers stick my two fingers in here and kind of pull them apart a little bit so I have control of this thing and we're going to get to glazing. You can really see the difference between the glazed and the matte side. Like I said, it just makes it a, it gives it more of a shiny look. But if you like that matte, that frosted kind of look, especially if you're going for, you know, these are shot glasses, so it's supposed to look cold, then, I mean, by all means, do however you see you like it. So we are all done with this one. Just going to let that sit and the allotted amount of time. Um, I like to put the resin over the emblem just because it helps solidify it. It keeps that glue nice and tight. But when you, um, when you glaze over these, sometimes depending on how thick you put them, because if you put like two or three layers, you end up with this bottom. I don't know if you could see that little lip that kind of sticks out. Again, just take our handy dandy Dremel this off a little bit and we're just going to file this down Oof. that's a lot see all done so now you have a cute little shot glass in the color scheme of the candy corn. It's perfect for Halloween. Um, give them as gifts in your candy bags for your uh, friends and family at the party. Also, you don't have to just use the candy corn um, color scheme for shot glasses. I made a cute little skull that I wanted to share with you guys. I was going to demold it for you just to show you how cute these candy corn colors can be on anything that you like. I even put candies to make his little brains. So you guys, the sky is the limit when it comes to these things. You guys can make this color scheme into any mold you want, get you some good molds, get you some good resin, and get you started. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. I hope to see you guys soon. Uh, hit that subscribe button and the like button. That would help me out a great deal. Um, I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.